Hello everybody and welcome to another Godzilla film podcast episode, which I haven't done it in a while now since Godzilla Minus One Part 2 live stream that I did a few months back. And it's been a while since I done one. And and if you haven't yet, the, the last podcast I ever done, it was, it was a few weeks ago that I talked about Son of Kong with Nathan from Monster Island Film Vault and all that. And if you want to, guys want to check out that previous episode, go ahead and check that out by clicking on the link in the description down below. So today's podcast episode, we're going to talk about the new uh, Godzilla and Kong Monsterfers film is Godzilla X Kong the New Empire, or you rather call it Godzilla Kong the New Empire, or Godzilla Cross Kong, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I just call it Godzilla X Kong and then all that. So, yeah, for this episode, we're not, uh, I, like, we're not, uh, there's not much research about the behind the scenes of this film, but. But in this episode, we're just going to talk about some fun facts about it and w what we know so much about it and some movie and references scenes in this and and all that. And we're just going to talk about that. And so it kind of it's almost like in my in my thought video that I did a few weeks back that I saw the film for the first time. Yeah. Yeah, there's only like five minutes uh, of it. So in this one, we're gonna, we're just gonna talk about the, this film and and how long this video is gonna take. But but anyway, so so we have special guests here for tonight. We have some of my boys here, Nathan from Monster Island Film Balls and <laughs> Neil, the guys who were in my one of my previous episodes from the yeah, from the past year. And please welcome back Walter, Jedi Grand Villain. How's it going, my boys? Well, <laughs> At this point, uh, I almost called you Elijah for some reason. At this point, Brendan, <laughs> I, Neil and I are practically your co-hosts on this thing. You have us on uh, so much. <laughs> uh, I, well, I, either that or you know, we, we're just desperate for attention. I don't know, Neil. <laughs> yeah, well, it's true. You, you guys, yeah, you guys definitely are my co-hosts. And and sorry, guys, to uh, give you keep you waiting so long uh, and about my terrible talking at the at the end before i add you back in it was, it was sort of a mix up i'm just i'm just really excited to, to talk about this film hey can guys. i make a special uh shout out to some of my friends real quick it's just i want to shout out to the sci-fi the century crew hey if you guys are watching i'm on here representing so we're all part of the big big family big universe so let's go with it you know <laughs> Yeah, I'm so glad I have you guys on here. And I was going to have Daniel McDemana on this episode, but fortunately he called off sick. I mean, yeah. Sick? Pasha. <laughs> there are no sick days for Godzilla content creators. <laughs> well, 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 There's Walter, no I'm crying. There's no crying in podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> well, while we have Walter here, you know, Walter is our you know, Walter will fill in for him. Yeah. So and I'm willing to fill in for anyone who may not be, but hey, I, I the more the merrier, you know. But hey, we're good right now, so let's do this. Hey, this is my first time podcasting with Walter, so this is exciting for me. Okay, well, I yeah, you, I did yeah. notice. This is yeah. Oh my I'm like, okay, this is the first. This is the first. Then, all right, this is history uh -huh. in the making here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, history, history in the making. Depending on how it goes tonight, I might mm -hmm. add you to my list for a potential co-host for my podcast. Hey, yeah, I'm and down with that. <laughs> and, and Walter, th this is your third time being on my show, right? Because you were in Invasion of Astro Monster podcast and uh, uh, minus one, one of part minus one. Yeah. Yeah. Really? That was oh, part wait, one. Wait. oh, part one. I was going to say, wait, 
I, I, I was on minus one, and I don't remember Walter. I was in part two. And we have a guess in the in the commas. It is Kaiju Kim. Kaiju Kim. Okay, our Kaiju sister. Kim, Kim, don't make us no see. Kim, don't make us drag you onto the show. We will totally <laughs> drag you onto the show. Uh, because yes. just like Schwartz and Zilla said a few months ago during the Christmas stream, we love you, Kim. <laughs> uh, I can, you know, I gotta have, like, you know, I even have Kaiju Kim on my show in a long time. I mean, we, I, I was hoping to have her back on my show again someday. Hey, this is, this is the movie to just go nuts with the guest stars. I'm just saying. <laughs> but but hey purple uh, purple pinkish color is uh, is kim's Pinkzilla. color <laughs> and and godzilla's you know, pinkish dorsal fins are in this film so i thought this episode would kind of fit for kaiju kim to talk about this because godzilla's dorsal fins are pinkish in this oh uh, yeah this is true i mean if 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 we did have Kim on here, she's definitely going to be bringing the Mothra energy. Now we just got to figure out you know, who's Godzilla, who's Kong, who's Suko. Uh, just... <laughs> yeah, and and then, and of course, this episode we're going to talk about spoilers. Yeah. Uh, if if one of the if one of the audience in the comments haven't seen the film, or uh, uh, please uh, leave this video if you haven't seen the film, but. If you have seen the film and want to hear some spoilers, feel free to, to stay as well, long as you way, want. If you haven't seen the movie yet, why not? <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I know one guy who hasn't, and uh, I sent him uh, that gif of, that was from Mothra vs. Godzilla with Scowly Godzilla, and I said, Godzilla is judging you right now. <laughs> yeah, right? for you. <laughs> Queen of Monsters is looking down on you for not looking at this already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, hey, Mato is here right now. I mean, I right. I didn't have my King of the Monster Monsterverse big Bandai version of it, but I just had the '92 Bandai. Yeah, Mato is always going to be something. Yeah, Mato is. Yeah, and the Mothra, fact that we're talking, dude, Mato is a spoiler technically. Yeah, and so we're already really getting spoiler. into it. Well, you led me to believe that Young Guri was in because he said that it had this fabulous cameo. I was like, well, obviously, we know who that is. Oh, oh <laughs> uh, I, Neil, ever, I'm just saying, ever since you came to visit me in Seoul, South Korea, <laughs> and where we recorded on Young Guri, uh, you've been a, uh, you've been like power mad and a little bit Dolulu. Now you just think Young Guri's in everything. <laughs> you, you know, you're going to tell me that Yongari is in Citizen Kane by a uh, time travel or something. Very <laughs> well, you know, yeah. you know, the creature for the Black Lagoon used the music from the American version of King Kong versus Godzilla. So there has been yeah. a time, time travel precedent there. I still yeah. don't know how they did it. <laughs> yeah, you know what, Neil? You know what, Neil? You write your Yongari time travel fanfic, send it to <laughs> G-Fan, and it will be the most popular story ever in the magazine. I'm Yo sure. It's like, like bacon. You can put him in any movie, you know, and it just gets better. You know? Anyway, we're talking about GXK, not young. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. We're talking about G GXK here. And so young yeah. for another podcast one day. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, Neil and I have already done that podcast. Okay. <laughs> that's why yeah, he, I did her. You yeah, guys. That's why he, that's why he's cuckoo for Cocoa Pops over here. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to invite Donnie Winter to be in this episode, but I can see he's already joined your version, uh, oh, your wait. podcast Donnie version. Donnie would come on. Come on. Seriously, man. Send that link to Donnie right now. He will be he's here. A player, man. Yeah. He's yeah, he'll make <laughs> yeah, he's already he's already on your episode, and now it's, it's Walter and Neil's turn to be on um, Well, uh, true, true, true. But this is why we need Kim. We need the pink Zilla energy from Kim. <laughs> <laughs> more, the, more the Barbie energy. <laughs> like you say, it's a pink <laughs> Are you saying that uh, Godzilla in this movie is a Barbie fan, sir? I mean, he could be. He's a Barbie. He's a Barbie guy, too. So why not? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh man! <laughs> well, I did. 
Yes, I just sent uh, Kim the link, and uh, yeah, hopefully she will join us. <laughs> you got your wish, here, Nathan. Uh, well, uh, now, well, now I just need to see if the Queen of the Fabulous Empire will also <laughs> grant me my wish. Yeah. Well, anyway, so let's talk. Up, let's talk about how we discovered this film, which we all saw in theaters. <laughs> I, oh, I just love the trailers, you know. I just <laughs> love to talk I, about. I, I, I obsess over kaiju news. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all know we already saw it in theaters like a week or two ago. I've seen it twice. <laughs> Who's what's everyone's tally? Twice so far. Well, I just watched it this afternoon. Okay, well, I'm expecting it will at least be four for me because I'll probably see it one more time in theaters, and then I'll pro- and then I am. 99.9% certain it will be screened at G-Fest, and I will probably go to that, too. Yeah, well, I already saw it for the first time on the day that it first came out in theaters. Mm-hmm. I just saw it with my girlfriend on that day that is released. And I saw it for the second time during this week. I was, like, on a Tuesday night, I went I – went I, I went to saw it with a friend of mine I used to go to school with and he is more of a he's more of a Kong fan and a WWE fan. You know, it's funny. This was something I wish I had brought up in my episode, but there was already three and a half hours worth of stuff in it. But one of the funniest reviews that I saw from a social media user, I think it was on I don't remember if it was tw- if it was Twitix or whatever or I or Instagram. I saw it was shared on Instagram, but someone said this is it's like this is a move. This movie is what would happen if Christopher Nolan and the WWE made a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess makes sense because because Godzilla literally does a brain buster in this. <laughs> mm-hmm. I could see that. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't mention Michael Bay because that would be a lot more explosions and gratuitous uh, female attraction and all that. I'm like, yeah, we don't need that. We don't need to distract us from the uh, kaiju, please. You know? I uh, Michael Bay should be kept away from Gia. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I, I, I <laughs> Although then he'd probably do something nu- uh, do something nuts like put Mothra in a swimsuit. <laughs> oh my god, that would be that would be like so disturbing. And I think I just wrecked Walter. I just wrecked Walter right there. <laughs> wow, okay. There's a fan art we would like to see. <laughs> dude, dude, we live in a universe that includes Mothzilla. It's hard to get worse than that. True. Yeah, I mean, I've seen Kongzilla, so it's like, why not? Like, yeah. Oh, good lord! Please, let's not. Let's can we let's let's leave all the weirdo fan stuff you know, I mean, on uh, on the cesspools that are social media and focus yeah. on what we thought of it. We're on the reality where anything you can dream up, someone will dream up worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, I mean, yes. Yeah, so yeah, oh, this- well, oh, but Walter, how many times have you seen the movie? I have only seen it twice. So twice, far. okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's. Well, I'm the two... Elijah Thomas of the group. I saw it the most, you know. Yeah, so we have two people just... who saw the. Film I, Elijah twice. still needs to see it 27 more times because yeah. his local Elijah. theaters are expecting him to. <laughs> right. Yeah. He has set a precedent, but I, I think he's a little scared to cheat on his wife minus one. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I gotta say, I gotta say that this is probably one of the best uh, Godzilla Kong MonsterVerse films ever made. I mean, I mean, I There's was one other one. <laughs> I mean, if you want to call it that way, I mean, I mean, I know some movie sequels are not as bad, are not as good as the shows, but some of the you know, MonsterVerse films are really good, but especially. Especially when they have a big crossover film of Cap Kong and Godzilla, it'll be a big hit. But so far, two films: Godzilla versus Kong and the New Empire, almost like, almost like a tie, almost like a hit. Oh no! I guarantee you, GXK is going to make more money. 
Oh, it's, yeah. it is yeah. raking. It is raking in the box office right now. And I Good even, Lord, last I checked, I think it was almost at three hundred million dollars. No, it's past that. It's almost it's up, past three hundred. You know what? I'm going to look up the box office for this. Yeah. Keep, guys, keep talking. And uh, oh, looks like we have what? Why do you care? Yeah, you shall receive. <laughs> Nice to see you. Yeah. Well, right. welcome back, Haiju sister. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for having me on uh, at uh, such short notice. Long time no see. I know. It's been a long Kim, time. Kim, man. we love you so much. <laughs> oh, I love you guys too. We, yeah. we, lo we love you so much. It hurts me that I can't get you on my podcast this year. Same it here. hurts me you, so much. You were like a sister to all of us. <laughs> especially, I am going to hug you, you so much at G Fest. <laughs> she is married, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, okay, fine. I will I'm, get the husband's permission. I'm, yeah, well, I'm talking about your your twin, Donnie Winter. Yes, where where's where's my twin? Where's Donnie? Well, I was gonna invite him, but unfortunately, uh, I think he already joined on Nathan's show of the of the film. So, uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, I'm. You want me to invite him too? Yes. Oh yes. Invite him to do this. It's a party. Let's, let's do this down here in the, on the bottom row. You know, this will be a fun ride now. <laughs> you better. <laughs> hey, look at it. It's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to send it oh. to him now. Like... And he's going to be like, why do you want to have me on? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's face it. When you look, when you talk about uh, Godzilla X Kong and you expect more out of it, it's like, this is exactly what's happening right now. We get more with the people coming on here. So it's like, yeah. Okay. Okay. This is wild. This is wild. The current box office that I'm looking at right now for GXK is $373 million worldwide. Oh, snap. That's crazy. Now, I don't wow. know if it includes this, the current weekend or not on Box Office Mojo, and I wish I could get more of a breakdown than what it's giving me. But what's crazy is this movie... May, <laughs> The, its second week, it made the projections that it was given for its first week. It was hilarious. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you really won't know the final tally in terms of uh, the weekend until like Monday or at least Tuesday. You know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, after I saw the film, I did. You know, it's, uh, I I was afraid of what the ratings of this film is going to be. Like, if it's going to be a, a like a big hit or it's like a like a you know a rotten tomato if it's gonna be like splatter and like king of the monsters did okay i'm looking at another article that says it'll it will definitely get past 150 million dollars domestically by the end of the weekend oh yeah definitely yeah i so i know we've been mentioned about mothra i mean i want to talk about her more i mean when i saw this film i mean but first, let me back up. Before I saw it, I mean, I did uh, saw some new trailer commercials uh, that they release online. I mean, I just saw like some images uh, they, they actually show like Martha, and I was like, "What? Uh, no, that can't be true." I mean, uh, but when I went to saw the theater, they and I know as a when it. When some of the group were in the, the Hollow Earth, when they discover some of the written cave walls, uh, they show the image of Mothra, and I was like, "Moth? Wait, is it, wait, is is this for real? Mothra's gonna be in this?" And then somewhere the in the between the middle of the end, Mothra appears. I was like, "No way, she's back." She almost wasn't though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and when I and then when I when I saw she's first appear, my, my mind just blows. I mean, in the in the last film in King of the Monsters, she sacrificed herself uh, like by King Ghidorah's being. Uh, she gave her life to sprinkle her glitter on Godzilla. Her glitter, sprinkle, <laughs> sprinkle, yeah. or you, whatever you want to call it. I mean, this her fairy dust. 
<laughs> yeah, when it, when, but when she appeared in this one, I was like, wait, I thought she was dead. Like, well, let's uh, let's chat about that a little bit. So is this a different Mothra? Is it a reincarnation of Mothra? What do we think? That's what I thought. I don't know if this is a different species of Mothra. I mean, well, well, what do you guys think? I mean, I, I would lean toward being a different Mothra because didn't they say in, in, in the movie that she was the guardian of those portals? So she would have to be different from the one from the King of the Monsters. The one from the King of the Monsters was definitely, you know, a surface dwelling kaiju. And so this would have to be like a different version. Well, I bring it up because I know Michael Dogerty said in his commentary for King of the Monsters 2019 that he personally believes, and I don't, I think he just means Mothra in general. I don't know if it's specific to the Monsterverse version, but he he thinks that Mothra reincarnates, like each generation of Mothra is a reincarnation. It's, it's almost like uh, Mothra's invincible. She's like a god. Everybody god is, is, but yes. God is, yeah. But, but she is, though. I mean, you think about it. She's always, yeah, reincarnating herself, and she's always, she gets killed off, she dies, but she comes back differently, but just, you know, in a different way. And like I say, she. In a way, if you think about it, she, yeah, she really is invisible because her spirit carries on throughout her uh, reincarnation, you know, of, us, of herself. You know, it's, it's weird, but you know, I figure like that's her longevity. She continues, and she's even been of a, um, a different of a different gender. You know, so it's like, yeah, I mean, it's it oh, has Mothra, uh, Mothra Leo, yeah, her yeah, Mothra Leo, so yeah, like her, her son, uh huh, yeah, well. Uh, the, well, this is half her, her adult form in this film. I mean, and I noticed that this is the first film that ever have a crossover of Kong and Mothra. Which is yes. exciting. It, yes, it, that for is the really first exciting. time. Yeah, well, I mean, well, you know what that made me think of, actually? Brendan, and you'll appreciate this. It oh, wait, 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 me... wait, Nathan, don't tell me. I... I think I already know this. I mean, I think I did mention in my thought video. I mean, I know this is the first time they have Mothra and Kong together, but this I think this was based off the original idea for Ebra Horror of the Deep. There you go. One yeah, of your okay. favorite Godzilla films. Yep, and, one of my you know, favorites. I, and I should let you know, it's it's also one of my most popular episodes of the podcast, so congratulations. Oh. And, <laughs> I, uh, the Mothra and Film Vault. And... I think I think I think that because as far as I under as far as I can piece it together, the only real big change that they made to the script when they decided that it would you know, that it wouldn't be a Kong film when Rankin Best said we don't like this one is they just you know plopped out Kong and replaced him with Godzilla. Which if that's the case, Kong almost met Mothra in the sixties. It's wild. yeah, they almost did. I mean, I mean, I just wish they could have kept. They could kept Kong in Ebro Horror the Deep, but but it made more sense with Godzilla in it. Yeah, but let's be honest, Mothra in this is Kaiju Mom. <laughs> right. <laughs> which I which is it cracks me up. It was a joke that Donnie made on the on my film fault episode, and I turned it into a meme and it went semi-viral because Unite got got uh, Unite Godzilla fans got wind of it and just shared it and then it got stupid popular on on Instagram. It was kind of ridiculous where it's like Mothra and Godzilla and Kong sitting in a car and and it says, <laughs> "Boys, calm down." <laughs> and then Godzilla's like, "I don't need help from those stupid monkey." And then it's supposed to be there like God, her and Kong are looking over their shoulder, like, "What did you just say?" <laughs> but uh, but that's what she does. She like, as Donnie put it, she pulls the minivan over and sits them both down <laughs> and it's just like, "Boys, yeah, boys, get boys, boys, settle down." <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna say, that's what Kim does with all of us at GFest. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, when we go back, uh, she, Kim is the Mothra <laughs> of of, uh, of our group in GFest. <laughs> <laughs> and and I gotta say, uh, after Mothra appears in it, when I saw this, I I I was imagine if 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 Donnie Winter was in this episode with us. <laughs> I bet he will share his experience uh, after he saw the film, what he thinks of when he saw Mothra for the first time in this. Oh, he was very happy. He told he told us all about it in the film vault. 
<laughs> oh yeah, I I I got to listen to that episode. Yeah, yeah it's going crazy. <laughs> Especially on YouTube right now. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I also had Ryan, the Omni Viewer, Collins, and Snazzy on that episode. So I'm not surprised that by their powers combined, it's been turning into quite a popular episode. <laughs> yeah. And I gotta say, like, you know, remember the one scene in Ebro Horror the Deep after Godzilla ripped off Ebro's claws off and then he does this and Mothra <laughs> appears and then Godzilla just looks up and it's. And then I always imagine if Kong would do the same thing in this, but mm -hmm. sadly he didn't. Kind of like a mostly, mostly because he's just like, thanks for showing up, Mothra. Yeah, <laughs> the lizard and I were at it again. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. he started it. Because <laughs> 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 seriously, like Kong is like, dude, dude, no, 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 I no, no, no. Fight. no. I that's what I was like, what are you doing <laughs> on my turf? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm just happy that the Sphinx survived those poor pyramids, but at least the Sphinx made it. Yes, I was going <laughs> to say the Sphinx got the work. I mean, the, uh, the pyramids pretty much obliterated, but the Sphinx thankfully survived. You know, I mean, at least there's one thing to hold over for uh, uh, Egyptian, you know, uh, culture there. It's like it still survived. Like the pyramids, out of here, you know? <laughs> Yeah, um, let, let's hope Godzilla didn't irradiate and mutate the mummy. That's I was going to say, I want to be I mean, I, I, there's, there was, a, although Ultraman did fight a giant mummy once. Yeah. Hmm. In, fact, the, uh, in fact, the 1999 remake of The Mummy starring Brendan Fraser is coming back to theaters. Mm -hmm. I think somewhere next week or for the anniversary. anniversary. 25th anniversary, yeah. Yeah, I that is me and my dad's favorite movie of all time from Universal. Yeah. I, is, I'm so excited to see this film in theaters. In fact, is it, I should do a podcast episode about that film someday. Yes, yeah, should. Get, have your dad on and talk about it. Oh, yeah, I got to have my dad. And oh. In fact, my, my dad knows about the actor who played Benny. Oh, Oh, really, uh, In fact, he actually went to my dad's school back then. Hot dang. Oh, okay. Yeah. My world. But we're not talking about mummies. We're talking no, we're about not. Godzilla yeah, and not. Kong. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm... Oh, here, right? what? One question, Jill. Did anyone notice a kind of a uh, Gidro, the three-headed monster reference during yeah. that uh, moment in Egypt, I mean, because uh, yeah, somebody brought that to my live stream. Uh, yeah, seriously, Mothra webs up Godzilla and the monster he's fighting. and says, "Get along and go fight the real bad guy." Right. Yeah. <laughs> I was just so enamored with the fact that I'm seeing Godzilla, Mothra, and Kong in the same frame, and I was just like, "What?" I mean, there yeah. two, yeah. these two, three legends are here on the screen. I'm like, yeah. All, oh, we no. were, all we were all we were all we were missing was G assigning something like Godzilla what language <laughs> 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 which would have been perfect <laughs> so now I need to learn how to sign Godzilla what terrible language no no I'll, I'll, I'll edit it in for you <laughs> and and let me tell you guys this I mean I don't know if it's true but I don't but I did found a research. I mean, I don't know if it's true, but I think there was a rumor about that Mothra wasn't the original kaiju to be in this film. They were going to have like a different insect kaiju character yeah, they, to it. They, the they, they, ha they wanted Mothra, but they hedged their bets because they had to get the rights from Toho. And so if they didn't get the rights, their backup plan was to have an original kaiju named Phosphora. Phosphora. Who yeah. does? Who does technically make a cameo in one of the hieroglyphics? So wow. she's in there, and you can go find some. I think some concept art for her, and she looks pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. I would have been happy if it was Phosphora, but I'm happy we got Mothra. But yeah. it kind of throws me off that uh, the fact that I'm like, okay, y'all gotta get the right for Mothra. Then you just have him in, uh, her in. Toho is, uh, Toho is weird and they're very particular. My guess is they probably gave them the rights for King of the Monsters and that was it, so they had to go to him again. Yeah. Toho. <laughs> Toho. I'm glad they spent the money for that. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not like Godzilla because they because Legendary knew they were going to make multiple Godzilla movies, so they're like, hey, give us a time frame for when we can make movies, and they're like, okay, here's your time frame. But with the, the other monsters, they had to negotiate separate rights from for them. It's it's a really obnoxious thing, although Toei is worse when it comes to that. Good lord, Toei is awful. Yeah. Absolutely awful. But then you have Katakawa and Tsuburayo who are Tokusatsu Santa Claus. They're like, here, just do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and I just noticed, I mean, I know that Godzilla x Con, the new Empire, came out this year. But there's also another movie that almost had the word empire in another film, like like Ghostbusters, Frozen, Frozen Empire. Empire. Yeah. There's a lot of empires right now. Yeah. Like the Lots pirate of striking back. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, that is, that is kind of awesome, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that Ghostbusters, uh, the Frozen Empire, was released on the week before got, the new Empire came out. Yes. yes. Yeah, it's like it's just so it just blew my mind that it, that that Ghostbusters the it has and Godzilla and Kong had both titles had the same word Empire. Yeah, it's but funny, you know but I wouldn't make much of it. But you know what's I what's kind of uh, uh, uncanny about that is called the Frozen Empire Ghostbusters is, but there's a creature in the new Empire. That can cause a frozen, oh, a frozen event, right. and it's like, that why does that be cause? That, is, that, that is true. Okay, that is, that is true. Yeah, With Ghostbusters. There's an ice demon, and then in this one, we have basically an an ice goddess, an ice dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ice dragon, Shimo. more like it, Shimo. Who uh, Shimo might Shimo might be the breakout uh, breakout kaiju star of this I movie. Pet, I want to pet Shimo. Hey, Donnie well, Winter. Well, yeah, well, don't Donnie get Win frostbites. Oh, <laughs> right? oh no, uh, no, Donnie no. Winter <laughs> said that he's not sure if Shimo is a kindly grandmother or an angry puppy dog. Both. Yeah, that's what I said. It's oh, both. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess is is I gotta say like Shimo is. I I know how you want to call it Shimu or Shimo. Shimo. It's Shimo. That is the official. Shimo. Name. Help me out. For now yeah, time. Shimo. It, Every time people say Shimu, I'm just like, that is far too close to the killer whale. Right. right. That's what I'm... Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. he is a killer, but she needs she, she, she force to do what she does. She so. means no harm. I felt so bad for Shimo. <laughs> yeah, that she's being controlled by Scar King. I mean, yeah, I want to be gangster. Home, right? Yeah, I, no. I do. I, well, we'll talk about Scar King because, yeah. good Lord, Scar King. But I got to ask everybody, what do you think that the crystal or whatever that he had on the end, uh, end of his whip to manipulate Shimo. Was that just a crystal? I thought it was one of Shimo's spines. I thought so too. What is it? Yeah, I, I can't, I I, every place I look at just says it's an ice crystal, but I always thought it was one of her spines because that just made more sense to me. I mean, that's yeah, it's almost that's like, a, assuming. it's almost like a crystal remote control. Yeah, right. but I th I still think it's one of her spines because I it think that's what it is too. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Too, that's too on the nose, like because the way she he she bent well when he uses it at her, he she bends like at his wheel. Like, so yeah. it will make sense for it to be one of her spines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, and Shimo is huge. <laughs> yeah, good Ooh. lord! I think she's as tall on all fours as Godzilla is upright. <laughs> it is bonkers Taller. how huge he, he she is. Uh, don't forget about that bone bridge, you know that. The oh my oh, gosh, yeah. the bone bridge was one of the coolest images in this movie. It was <laughs> so metal. It was so like you know, Edgar Rice Burroughs, a Robert E. Howard Pulp Fiction. I just, I loved it, dude. The way you see that, it's like, okay, this thing dwarfs Kong. You gotta think, what is this beast that there's? Showing the skeleton of it, like I would want to know what that is, man. I really would. Uh, uh, see, that's one of the things that I don't think people appreciate about this movie is that it throws a lot of really interesting things at you without necessarily explaining everything, and everyone acts like that's a bad thing. It's like, why is that a bad thing? It can it can just exist, 
because it's part of the world. You don't, if you have to stop and explain everything in the world, this movie's going to be five hours long. And other than the five of us in this call and Danny DeManna, nobody else is going to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I was going to say that what, what I heard from my Kaiju brother, Goji Fan 98, that, that, what I learned from him that he said that Shimo was actually based off one of the original ideas of ang for Angerus for the GMK film. Uh, who is? Uh, I think I've that's heard. <laughs> I've heard some people say that the that the original monsters in this were stand-ins for Toho Kaiju. I don't know how much I buy that. I, I and I got. But you know what? I th I always image Shim Shimo as Angerus. He's almost, I mean, he's kind of like a, a like a frozen kaiju version of Angerus. Eh, kind of. Eh, really. Or if you want to call it, I mean, that's pushing it. Yeah. It doesn't really make sense because that would be a very radical reinterpretation of Angerus. That'd be really weird. Yeah. Angerus, the ice dragon. That's just that doesn't that doesn't sit right. Anger is a spiky no. boy. That's what he is. He's just a spiky boy. He's spiky. Yeah, because once you start, once you start giving anger as ridiculous powers, it's not really anger anymore. The whole point is that anger is like, all I got is my spikes and my teeth, and I'm still gonna rip your throat out, Ghidorah. I don't care if you got gravity um, beans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. He's ferocious and tenacious. That's why we love him. He's doing his best. Yeah. yeah. And then and, he's an armadillo in Final Wars because, of course. And I gotta say, I mean, Shimo, he's kind of like the, she's kind of like, uh, yeah, Angerus is true love. <laughs> oh my god. Because, <laughs> you know, Shimo's a female. And it's almost... I, 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 she's also about 10 times his, as big as he is. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I know that, that she is a uh, He's a bad girl. <laughs> <laughs> I know that Shimo is kind of is is Scar King's guarded dog, or but I can see yeah. Shimo is kind of she's kind of more uh yeah. Well, I know I, his. I don't know. I, I she might have been making some googly eyes at Godzilla. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I know she his... did look over at him. She's like, "Wait, I'm free. Hey, uh, can I kill him? <laughs> what, make, make him also jealous, maybe in that sense, a triangle, tiger <laughs> triangle there." <laughs> yeah. Well, what I'm trying to say is, I know Scar. I know she is Scar King's guard dog, but I think she's kind of more. She's kind of more like for Elsa's guard dog from Frozen. You know, Dizzy Frozen. Elsa doesn't need a guard dog. No, she does not. <laughs> no. I know Shimo no, has Scar ice King. powers like Elsa. Uh, it, it, and so does Iceman and Mister Freeze. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fees. Well, uh, mm -hmm. well, yeah. well, like I said, uh, the hollow earth is is the unknown. Into the Into unknown. The unknown. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Frozen puns. Uh. Don't worry, guys. Why can you guys just let it go? Oh, oh, my my gosh. Gosh. Uh, all right, then. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this is. This is not a Disney film we're talking about. This is oh oh this is no, 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 no. You, you, got have, day. you got to have your Disney connection kaiju movie discussion with me for Mighty Kong. Okay, you're done. Landon. Yeah. He apparently loves us, Kim. <laughs> apparently, we're fantastic. Why would why wouldn't he love us? Well, they were fabulous. Fabulous. <laughs> yeah, fabulous. Uh, you'll be happy to know, Kim, that I heard that uh, uh, there was a band on the uh, that played on the island, Monster Island, that was called Watonki and the Fabulous Empire of Monsters. Ah, uh, that's amazing. I suspect they you started it, but <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we got more stuff to talk about. Huh, so like... we've talked about Mothra and Shima. Where do we go next? I can want to talk. talk... Oh, good. What do you, what do you want to, uh, it's your show, Brendan. What do you want to talk about? Mm -hmm. I'm setting I, you up, I, man. I, I'm I, I got to say, we, Kim, will you just uh, get to Scar King? I was. Yes, Scar King. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, let's talk about the main villain in this, Scar King. Scar King is just the, 
he is a total yeah, yeah, bully. He's bully. a bully. Yeah, and that's pretty much all he is. I don't. I he is a bully. Did not find him very intimidating. To be the, honest with you, the, here's what how I put it: Scar King is not the necessarily the most. He's not necessarily the most powerful guy in the room, but he controls the most powerful thing in the room. That is true. That's how that's I think that is why he's been able to maintain his iron fisted rule of the tribe of apes is because he basically he just lets him know it's like if you get out of line, I got an ice dragon. Yeah. If I if I can't beat you, the ice dragon will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I gotta say, like, I mean, Scar King, he's like 10 times stronger than Kong. Is he? Oh, I think, or five times stronger. I mean, he. Did, I mean, listen. He did beat. He did beat up Kong pretty well, but I mean, that's true. But, but it. But it's it's Shimo. That's that Shimo is his secret weapon. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, thank you. Keep my scar thing had one advantage because he had that spine whip, so he had a kind of a ranged weapon that that out distance Kong's axe, and that was really gave him the edge. And okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not, can I point out that he's Scar King with a K? <laughs> <laughs> because apparently this is the 90s. Let's be honest. If he was human, he'd be a Conan the Barbarian character. Yeah. He is such a Conan, a Conan character. <laughs> but then again, yeah. Kong, I've been joking since GVK that you may as well call these Kong the Barbarian at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, I gotta you know, say, I mean, Scar King, he's kind of like a a coolest uh, Kong villain character in this. I mean, I mean, I don't is I didn't do any wishers of who came up with the idea for Scar King. I've this movie had a couple different screenwriters. I'm guessing it was probably Terry Rossio, because I think he did the first draft of the script. And. <gasps> Oh my god, guys! Look who just joined! Hey! Hey! Donnie Winter! Surprise, Welcome friends! <laughs> now the party can begin. The whole gang's here. <laughs> yeah, uh, look at no Donnie. Uh, Donnie, bring it the pink Zilla energy right there. Yes. Always, you know me. Oh my god! Uh. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Oh wow! Now we're big. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, now my. we're the Brady Bunch. You can oh, see my you did that. that just for that joke, didn't you? Oh, look. <laughs> okay, so yeah. I love it. Uh, so, how is everyone doing this evening? Splendid. We've been doing good. Even Donnie. better now that you're here. Now we can yeah. really party. Well, hey, man, you're making my day. It's a much needed well, break from grading. Uh, 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 oh well, uh, uh, yes, I. I I understand that pain. I, yeah. <laughs> I, but I, I'm just saying. I, I'm just saying. Look at you. Look at you, Donnie. We got you on this show. Our podcast for, on GXK is doing gangbusters right now. I know, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. We. Well, I know you already uh, talked about this film in Nate Nathan's show, and and uh, we already talked about our experience. How, how that how we we saw the film once or twice. I mean, how many times? I mean, you already saw the film, right, Donnie? Yes, I've I've only seen it once, though. Sadly, oh, okay. hopefully that will change in the next week or so. I'm supposed to be seeing it with some of my friends, and one of my friends' sons, like her son, is like a huge Godzilla fan. So we're gonna like bring our figures and nerd out together. It's gonna be great. Uh, He's basically like an an honorary nephew. So, Donnie. So we already talked about the characters Godzilla, Kong, uh, uh, Shimu, and right in the middle of Scar King. I mean, we are talked about Mothra, but I want to share how yeah, about your experience of uh, how did you fe felt uh, after Mothra appears in this film? <sighs> because <laughs> I know Mothra is your favorite kaiju. Yeah. Well, this younger me. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter one, subsection five. Exactly. Uh, really <laughs> he's got a whole dissertation I, on that. I do, I do. Fully um, cited everything. I was fully uh, cited. <laughs> I was blown away. I, I was a lot of reading of it. 
<laughs> Twin, I've missed you. <laughs> I've missed you so much. Um, so I, I was mind blown. Like I, like I, I, we didn't get a lot of Mothra in the grand scheme of things, but the Mothra we got felt worth the wait, and for me, felt a little bit more satisfying than the Mothra I got in Godzilla King of the Monsters because we got to see like more of the action. We didn't see like the panning away to like the humans not that you know i dislike the humans but like mothra versus rodan still annoys me to this day because we <laughs> literally like fleeting milliseconds of them battling and then oh some the humans are doing something <laughs> that right there was more of a battle <laughs> brenton <laughs> than what we got but she stabbed him in the back from the front <laughs> that was the most riveting moment honestly <laughs> And it was their only moment. I mean, I yeah. as you say, well, was, uh, yeah. I should let you know, Donnie, that your joke about a Mothra pulling over the minivan, I made a meme of that, and it got crazy popular on <gasps> Instagram because Unite Godzilla fans sh saw it and shared Love it. That. I also <laughs> shared one on my Mothra page of, like, the the scene from the Barbie movie with, like, <laughs> Barbie and Ken, and or Barbie and Alan in the vehicle, and I just... I wasted an hour making that when I should have been doing more productive things. <laughs> hey, if it brought you joy, it's not a waste of time. Oh. Well, Mr. Monster I needed Man to hear that, Kim. Thank you. Uh. Well, Mr. Monster Man says the movie was a, and uh, yeah, the and, movie was a MID, and that's yeah, you know, that's a solid five out of ten. I I respectfully disagree with you, although. Mm. Although at least you're not making a four and a half hour podcast episode that nitpicks and deconstructs it scene by scene just yeah. to prove how much you hate it. For crying out loud, people. Not naming <laughs> names, but it wasn't me. <laughs> I mean, you, you're going to have your critics. I, I get I get that. But it's just like, you can just go and just get, get a big uh, pile of popcorn and just enjoy the festivities. Festive that's on the screen there instead of trying to judge every damn thing. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Everything. Speaking of popcorn, uh, hang on, guys. I'll be right back. You can still Oh, talk. no. Did he get the bucket? Did he get well, the bucket? now I'm jealous. I just want to say this, and this is going to be the only time I bring this up. I'm back. Okay. Hi. Yes, the buckets. <gasps> he got the bucket. Yep. I got the bucket My here. theaters never have anything good. They never had any of that. I should have been a Karen. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love the bucket. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, this is the only time I'm going to say it. Please, please, let's not make the mistake of trying to compare this to Minus One because it is not a fair comparison because they are two very different oh, movies. Are people still why, doing why, that? Why would some yeah, people yeah. are Some people are still trying to do it, and I think even if they're not making the... If they're not making the direct comparisons, they've, I think in their minds, they've just decided that, you know, like Mr. Four and a Half Hours has just decided if it's not minus one, it's crap. And I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, you know, he's the four hour in the, in the, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like, okay. I mean, mind you, I don't think the movie is perfect by any stretch of the imagination but I, mean, I i i would break some people's hearts and tell them that i mean even minus one's not entirely perfect right. no movie is so. I, I mean but we but we know when to enjoy something and when to just kind of like allow the criticism to fall into the background and just enjoy the moment you know yeah and and it's i mean i was gonna say i mean i Minus one did get an Academy Award. Uh, I mean, this one could theoretically get one next year. Possibly. Yeah. Uh, you know. Know. It'll be pretty epic if that happened. That would be how insane would it be if these both won uh, Academy Awards? That would be fantastic. <laughs> back to back. It, it, like, you want to talk about validation? Someone just, would have to pinch me seriously because I'm just like, what? You know? Uh, so, so let's get back to Scar King. Scar King. So, Scar King. so where was I? I was, and and he's, we, we know, were saying we were saying he's a bully, and the real reason that he's powerful is because he controls Shibo. Yeah, yeah. Ace in his hole. Ace in the hole. Yeah, mm -hmm. 
ever since the first teaser trailer was released, we they just revealed the new kaiju villain. It's, it's almost like an evil version of Kong, but it has longer arms and almost yeah, like he's a, an orangutan. He's yeah, an he's, orangutan. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. Scar King, he's kind of almost look like a rang giant orangutan. I mean, and it and then it shows uh, the skulls of Godzilla and Kong and. Mm-hmm. And people say he looks like a giant evil villainous version of King Louis from the I've Jungle Book. That. I've I've heard that, but that's because, like I said, he looks like an orangutan. What a comparison! Yeah. What? It, it yeah. is quite it is quite the comparison. But why didn't we get a, a song break in the middle of the? <laughs> well, uh, well, guys, because you correct. weren't in the movie, Donnie. We we Kim, would have definitely had a music number. <laughs> I would have loved that. I, I want to. I'll edit that in for you when it, when it's on Blu-ray. I'll edit that in. I'm gonna edit that in, and I gotta edit in Gia saying Godzilla. Yeah. Language. Well, guys, Godzilla, a Godzilla, I, what language? So you're gonna wait? You gonna get the King Louis song from Jungle Book and yes. throw it in there? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I've already seen some pretty funny fan edits of some things. In well, guys, movie. if you, well, if you, well, guys, like, I don't want to be like Scar King. <laughs> yeah. Well. Well. Uh. Well, just point at us and laugh. Oh, like Scar King. Yeah, I was he, actually a little surprised by that, like, because uh, it was because you think he's just gonna he's gonna walk up there and start a fight, but instead he's just like, look at this guy. Exactly. <laughs> That's a great. <laughs> but you know what? About that whole thing is because you know it was all about kind of like the social order and call you know Scar King was all about ruling by the Iron Fist and the Kong brings in introduces compassion which completely unravels the whole social fabric so but you had a because we- had a uh, yeah, yeah weapon uh, weaponizing Suko is totally compassionate <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 what I okay. see, what I see, hang on there, hang on there, Tex. Let's let's get the, you know. I, okay. I was just gonna say, when I see one monkey use a smaller monkey to beat up other monkeys, yeah, I'm well, totally well, thinking. Well, 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 that's that's fair. Suko was a little curd at first. He the slave get beat up. puts his hand down there, trying to help him up. I know, I know. I just small monkey again. Shout you really I know, I know. I'm just, I'm giving, I'm giving you a hard time, but we'll. I'm sure we'll talk about Suko because okay. Suko was something else. <laughs> but, yeah, but here's another thing, though, with the, the Scar King. Now, I was not expecting that. And that's the thing about him laughing at Kong at, at everyone to say, look at him. This dude stands out with that false tooth and everything. And then he goes and does a, uh, this is Boston when he kicked that other ape into the lava. I'm like, what? Dude, why? You know, and this is his intent. This is his uh, intimidation uh, display. You know, he's got to show that, you know, I'm not playing around. Yeah, I'm going to make fun of you, but I'm going to kill you if you stand in my way, you know. So it's like, it's, it's hilarious when he does. And, it, I, and, he does. and I love how Scar King was making fun of Kong's new tooth. That was really fun. So I mentioned this during the our episode, Nate, um, on your show. I really appreciate, well, normally I detest when they insert too much humor in like action movies, like the Marvel movies drive me bananas with like, especially the bananas? recent ones, like every other, <laughs> <laughs> did not mean that, but I'll go with it. No pun intended. Um, I like, it just, uh, the newer like Marvel movies, for example, just so oversaturated with humor that it's like, okay, where's the gravity of the situation? Blah, blah, blah. blah. But like in this film, I felt like, there was a, a nice little dollop of humor here and there that wasn't too overwhelming. It was like, oh, ah, ha, ha. but then it's like, oh, crap, serious business is happening right now. And I felt that that was kind of refreshing. So, yeah. And, uh, and oh, what else I was going to say? Uh, yeah, so, yeah. So I know that ever since the first Monster First film of Godzilla from 2014. I mean, I know there are only two Godzilla films from the MonsterVerse that, that is more of a Godzilla story. I know we have Cog Skull Island as a Kong story, but but two films of Godzilla and Kong in two films, those two films were more of a Kong story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've noticed that the MonsterVerse has a habit of just kind of shoving Godzilla in the background. Yeah, we, yeah. 
like we need to have more Godzilla story to it. We need to have we need more Godzilla to it. Well, there's there's a reason for that. If, uh, Wingard, the director of this, has gone on record as saying that he thinks it's easier for audiences to identify with Kong than Godzilla, which I do think is an accurate assessment. Mm -hmm. So for him personally, he feels like Kong is the main character of the MonsterVerse. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so let's keep another thing in mind too. Look at how many movies that Godzilla has versus Kong. So I, I love the fact that Kong is the star, you know, because like you look at the, the United States made four Kong movies and three of them had the exact same story, you know. And then the fourth one ends the same way as the other three. The army kills Kong. So the monster first finally broke Kong out of the mold, which mm -hmm. is really nice. And they gave him a story arc. And especially if you're a young kid who loved Kong, and now you finally get the chance to see Kong in a way that you played with him as a toy, he's now a hero, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and I, he still maintains a lot of his animal qualities, too. They hadn't gone yet too far with the, how, how you say that word, anamorphic. Anthropomorphism. And that's it. That's the word. You know, I, I looked at my English major friend there to help me out with the big words. Anywhere but more than two syllables. They call uh, they call me the kaiju academic for a reason. Yeah. Yes, Kim. Yes, Kim. Scratch it off the bingo card. Did Did you know I have a, a master's mm -hmm. degree? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> People feel like, well, we're not getting enough Godzilla. I was like, well, technically, you got a lot of Godzilla because let's compare the list of Godzilla movies versus the list of Kong movies. You got a lot. Of, already got a lot of Godzilla. It's time yeah. to get more. Well, th that's something that we should definitely be talking about here because there are <laughs> long sequences of this movie that are just monsters. And I know I I know I haven't seen the new show Monarch on Apple TV. I mean, I haven't seen the show yet. I mean, I know this is a this is a prequel and a sequel. I mean, no, it is, well, no, Monarch is Monarch is. Yeah, I, I'm talking about Monarch. Yeah, so, Monarch, Monarch is that, that it switches between the 40s and 50s and. When, uh, 20, 20, 2015. 2015, yeah, because it's mm -hmm. a year after Godzilla 2014. Yeah, I gotta say, this is that this show took place after Godzilla 2014 and before King of the Monsters. Yeah. And I gotta say, I, I haven't seen this show yet. Is, isn't that like a, more of a Godzilla story or a Kong story? Godzilla or, shows up, and it and there are some key points that where he is in the plot, and uh, that's all I will say to avoid spoilers. Oh yeah, so, I hear they're coming out with a season two. Oh yeah, right. season two's been greenlit. I I gotta yeah. watch this show, and I, they've I, all I, and they're also promising spinoffs. <laughs> Don't know what that is. Uh, oh. A monster show. <laughs> Please, <laughs> and if hire me as a writer, legendary. I'm here and waiting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and Donnie, I... if you get a call from Legendary, can you tell them that you have a friend named Nate who would like to write? <laughs> I would like to. Get... And if they need help with editing, hi there, hello. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me edit Godzilla. I want to edit a Godzilla. We're gonna be on a whole team together, and it's gonna be magnificent. Yeah, See, we're we're gonna do. We're basically gonna do one of uh, an entire spinoff. We're do like. Uh, like a five episode mini series, and it will be the best thing in the monster verse. Uh, <laughs> you guys write the series, you gotta have Bernie the podcaster as yeah. Oh, you know what? I <laughs> you know what? Actually, actually, I got it. I got it. Here's my pitch. Here's my pitch, guys. This is what we're gonna do. We're going to do a spinoff that is uh, that is the Titan Truth podcast. So it'll be like Bernie coming on and talking to people about what's going on in the monster verse. <laughs> and having the weirdest conversations ever. <laughs> you know, like you were saying during our, epi our episode on your show, like that would have been such a brilliant marketing tactic. Oh, it would have been. Which still could be used for a future film. Yeah. So. And, 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 <laughs> if you, and if you look at his podcast title, uh, his podcast episode titles in this, he's like, Talk, there's mention of Monster Island. Hello. P Planet mm. X. Madison Russell was on to talk about the Mothra fairy moon theory, which whatever <laughs> that means. <laughs> uh, I, I, I would say I've been thought about this new podcast idea for, for a long while. I was thinking about doing a podcast episode about Godzilla multiverse. Like, yeah, I want to talk about a podcast episode that what if the, uh, the monsterverse era, yeah, you know, 
does a new film that have Godzilla enter the the multiverse. So it kind of sounds similar to Spider Man No Way Home. Yeah. If they're going to do that, I want a crossover with Pacific Rim. Oh, yeah. uh, I was to say they should do like. Uh, if they do a film like this, they should bring back some Toho classic monsters back. I mean, if they brought the rice from Toho, good luck right. with that. Yeah, good I mean, luck that would be like if they do that, that film would be a huge hit. Oh, yeah. Anyway, we're talking, speaking of huge hits, we're talking about GXK. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what we're here for. That's yeah. Right. And, be- right. Yeah, and there's one thing I want to talk about. I mean, I know this, some Godzilla films from the Shona era. I mean, like, I know that Godzilla versus Gigan and versus Megalon has two monsters against two of two teams. Two monsters against two. I mean, but this is like, this one is like the first Monsterverse film that ever show two monster team against another two monster team. I mean, we kind of got that sort of in King of the Monsters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, Mothra, because Mothra took care of Rodan while Godzilla fought Ghidorah. That's yeah. true. Oh, I would yeah. argue. I would argue that this film's done something way different than most other kaiju films in the sense that we have multiple creatures on a team on both teams battling each other. Mm-hmm. On a more grand scale, can can we talk about the insane zero G fight? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that was fun. That I deserves swear. an Oscar. <laughs> I swear, I I thought to myself, if Godzilla holds his tail and breathes fire, the did in Adora, I'm just like, I was gonna lose it. I was just like. Oh, no, my, no, my no, childhood no. dreams are coming true here right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As funny as that would have been, I would have preferred the drop kick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you talking about the are you talking about the Egypt fight scene? No, the one in the hollow earth where they're floating around the when they're floating around oh, yeah. Yeah. It's with the, when there when there's no gravity. Like it just uh, can you imagine like maybe or maybe you could do something weird to actually like, combine it like maybe Godzilla turns around and like blows the atomic breath to uh, to propel himself and then he just flattens out and drop kicks Scar King in the first. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow! Oh, my well, goodness. One of the highlights of the uh, zero G thing is that Mothra actually kind of had the edge because she could fly, so she's like soaring in between the rocks, they uh, the and firing off, squirting out her little. Silk bombs, and another thing too is refreshing too is we actually see her fight something else than Ghidra. Now she's you know fighting what? this army of you know giant gorillas, which is another you know. thing to nice to get a little variety because you look at most of her movies, she's always fighting Ghidra. Absolutely, like mm-hmm. excellent point. Like, okay, ready for the soliloquy. Um, oh no! Oh, oh, oh here we go. Here's can we talk about popcorn? <laughs> here we go. How, Ears open. How she was just saving everybody constantly like she saved kong she she was like godzilla done sit down pulling this car <laughs> over um she shima was fro- like freezing godzilla she was like no 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 what are you doing slaps her she stops <laughs> saves the humans like five times but I, I was just like she's got it she's she's she saved the day. Yeah, at the point that was her domain. That she she was the guardian of the portals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why she's a queen, you know. Yeah, yeah, she is like the guardian of the hollow earth. And for a change, she did not die. Like, <laughs> <Rachel Lord. laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. Okay, if I really want if I really want to be that fan, well actually, it's not the first time. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I said, I I said for the first time, I meant for a change. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Yeah, yeah. So we already talked about Godzilla, Kong, Mothra, Shimu, and Scar King. I mean, like, so I want to talk about like, yeah, we all know that Godzilla just uh, on the surface fighting other kaiju's. I mean, I mean, let's talk about how he how he's been charged and he how's he changed how he evolves 
in his new form. Hey, Sella. <laughs> uh, Donnie. Form. All right, everybody, sit down. Let Donnie talk about Pink Scylla. <laughs> God's a living Barbara <laughs> Wait, 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 Donnie. Before you get to, I want to talk about like ever since the the the, the full trailer came out. I mean, I people just it, they just lost their minds. Like, why is Godzilla's mm -hmm. spines are pink? It's almost like they're trying wanna, to bring back I, Godzilla 2000. I was no, I would be like, I want to grab those people and shake them and be like, Did you not say shit, Godzilla? <laughs> I, I want to preface this. He was saying. freaking purple and shooting lasers out of every orifice. <laughs> 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 yeah, I gotta say that that this Godzilla form is, is kind of looks similar to the Millennium Two Thousand. He does yeah. a little bit. Like honestly, the people who were upset over pink pink Godzilla, they were it was like a small group of just really loud people, like just you know, they're just rattling their cage, being angry. <laughs> um, like they're like all is woke. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're they're the obnoxious kids who all sit at the same table, at, you know, during lunch, and they're like, "Wait, hang on, everything." It's Good just for like, you. can we Stay give the color there. spectrum a break? Can we just give the color spectrum a break? Like, <laughs> pink, like, yeah. just let pink be. It's magenta, technically. Yeah, technically magenta, and it's just like, just give it a break, people. Oh, well, I mean, you said on my podcast that technically what magenta is the what is it the most on the, the hottest color or the most powerful it's color? Second, it's it's second to the hottest color in like the radioactive spectrum when you yeah. when you look at like the wavelengths. Like white is the hottest. Magenta would be like the second. Yeah. Also, uh, also apparently, much like Kim, Kim Wingard's favorite color is pink. Well, there's also another thing to think about too far as uh, the aesthetics and, of the movie. If I can get sorry, Brent, if I can just squeeze this in really quick. Yes, now, yes. Let, but, let, let's say we kept Gaza with the blue radioactive ray, and then Nemo has a blue ice ray. So you have the final battle. You have two monsters shooting blue rays. Aesthetically, it would not look as good. So that's well, it's, it's a good idea to go and change someone's ray so that we, you know, just, just for, for the look of it, you know. Or, yeah. Or, or, or and, little aesthetics. I know we did mention uh, Godzilla's dorsal fins are pink. I mean, and you know the you know, like you said, Nathan, that uh, pink is Kim's color. I mean, the, and and that's why you want her to dangerous. bring her in the stream. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, why yes, we added to the, the joke. Stream, I made that joke months ago, but I just made it again. Too much pink <laughs> energy is dangerous. It'll never not be funny. It will well, never <laughs> since, God, since Godzilla has pink dorsal fins, I guess that kind of makes him a Barbie kaiju. We already talked about that. Too yes. much pink energy is infectious. Oh, that's okay. what scares people. Oh, <laughs> that, there we go. That's the quote of the night. Uh, uh, Donnie, we, I need that. I, I need that meme ASAP right now. <laughs> <laughs> and we figure out why Godzilla's form is like that. I mean, why he. Why he evolved into like his more powerful and pinkish spine form? I mean, because of this new Titan, uh, uh, this new Titan kaiju character that's in this, as in the Arctic, Tiamat. which names Tiamat, escapes yeah. me. Tiamat. 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 Poor Tiamat. She was just hanging out in her house, and Godzilla's like, "Hey, this is mine now. Goodbye." Right. Yeah, <laughs> as Donnie put as Donnie put it, is like, oh, hello, I need your house. <laughs> oh yeah, I was like, hey, I need your house. Bye. <laughs> Can you talk about how glamorous Tiamat looked? Oh, like, she's <laughs> Ooh, yeah. She was flowy and finny, and I was just like, you know, I'm actually were... dead. I know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I gotta say, she. I mean, all she all she had to do was get out of the way. I mean, and Godzilla would be like, "Thank you." And if somebody got no, but she was like, "Excuse my house. me, what are you doing in my house?" I <laughs> 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 think like Godzilla no better than Scar King in a way, you know, the way he treats his subjects, you know. <laughs> and I, Kim, Kim, can you when when you when the Blu-ray comes out, can you like? Do a voiceover for Tiamat. Yeah, and yeah, that I need stuff. you to do an edit. I need you to do an edit of that, like that exact. Yeah, the exact uh, find somebody. Find somebody to to be Godzilla. Just I don't know who you would get to be Godzilla, but you gotta get. You gotta do. It. Wait, get out of my house. What are you doing in my house? <laughs> well, it's not I guess, you. <laughs> 
voice of Godzilla, you use your Arnold Schwarzenegger voice. Get out of the <laughs> house now! Uh, you get out of your house! I need your house now! You want to fight me over your house? Okay, fine, you are going to die now! <laughs> yeah, and put the cookie down now! <laughs> what? what are you talking about cookies? I don't want any cookies, I want to <laughs> That is so rude, Godzilla, ew. And I was gonna yeah. say... <laughs> and I was gonna say that 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 new you know, Titan Kaiju character whose name escapes me again. Ugh. Which one? The one we just talked about. Tiamat. Tiamat. Yeah. Tiamat. That she she kind of oh I kind of think of her. She kind of looks like a a sne a sea snake version of Titanosaurus. It reminds me uh, of a, I, a little bit. Actually, you know what that whole Taurus has more in common with Shimo and in the, in the yeah, yeah, yeah. The actually, you know what that. that you know what that scene reminded me of more was Manda in Final Wars. Oh yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it's kind of Manda yeah, almost like that. Yeah, yeah. In fact, Godzilla is just running around Final Warsing everybody in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he does that. <laughs> but first, he sleeps in the Coliseum like a cat. Yes, oh, yeah. which, uh, which uh, Wingard has actually said was inspired by his own cat who has the glorious name of Mischief. Yeah, yeah. they actually made Godzilla into a cat. Hashtag style. Godzilla is a cat. <laughs> yes. I guess, they should, I guess they should call him Catzilla. Uh, 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 right. Why not? Uh, 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 but, I mean, Shimo's a dog, so. You know. There you go. <laughs> Shimo definitely has puppy yeah. energy. Because everyone's riding on her back, you know. <laughs> yeah, the scene and, where Kong just pats her on the face, like, yeah, just like the way you will pat a horse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, give with the horse. Oh my so, wow. let's talk about like how got, we all figure out how Kong got the beast glove. The beast oh, glove. The beast glove. I love well, that. That's what it says on one of the Playmate figure box. I mean. But when I saw this, I thought I just call it uh, the power glove. You know what? The power. Like, that's a meme I power. still need to make. That's a meme I still need to make. Oh no, I've made it. I haven't shared it yet. It's the uh, I love the power glove. It's so yeah, kind of like what, <laughs> kind of like the angry video game did yes. in a few yeah. of his episodes for the well, Super it's, Nintendo. Well, he was referencing a movie from the '80s called the no, it was the early '90s called The Wizard. That was like a 90 minute Nintendo commercial because it was showing off everything Nintendo. And there's a scene that feels like a commercial where this teenage boy plays a video game with a power glove and he's obviously not playing the game with the power glove. And then he just walks over and says, I love the power glove. It's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and we, we saw the, after we saw the trailer, we even figured out how the Kong got the power uh, oh i figured i figured he probably got it from monarch yeah I, and mm. and i don't know if he was injured by scar king but we all we all figure out because he was because his hand has been frostbite by shimu's uh, freezing breath well it's because shimo apparently caused the ice age apparently. And, you know so is she put the ice age on kong's hand that's not fun no yeah, and I and I figure out if that's what happened to all the woolly mammoths or saber tooth cats. Uh, now I'm oh great! Now you're talking about Schwarzenegger. Now I'm just thinking of <laughs> the bloody <laughs> dinosaurs. Shimo. Well, <laughs> <laughs> make that a meme now if you haven't already. <laughs> I need to make that meme. Yeah, Arnold. Like, like, blood <laughs> kill the dinosaurs. Shimo. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we can clearly theorize that Shimo is the reason why the door was frozen in the first place. Because it's kind of hard to imagine that how can something this powerful be frozen that it is in frozen night? So he you has know to be what? One. That is a that is a that is brilliant headcanon. And as far as I care, that is official now. I need the you know. I need the can some a legendary comics please make that official please give us a comic book where that is exactly what happens Ghidorah just shows up and all three and you know like you know uh, you know and Kevin is like oh look what are we gonna do and then they're like we're gonna ravage this planet then she was like no you're not yeah right. grandma says no, no. <laughs> 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 
I love Yamashimo. <laughs> Yamashimo says no. It's like, right. what are you going to do? It's like, I dare you to talk. <laughs> okay, I warned you. <laughs> uh, I, I believe me, I would, like, when I was, after I got off my, got out of my car from work, uh, to go to work on this very freezing weather when it's snowing, yeah, I was wearing no gloves. Now I know what frostbite feels. And uh, not quite. Well, not really, no. Frostbite, frostbite is awful. You would have required medical attention. Yeah, it would have been a lot more painful. And if, they, friend, and, if got... it went on, and if it went untreated, they might have had to amputate. Yeah. Or at the very not least, cut off a buddy. lot of skin. And, a good time. and the beat the beast glove was invented by this guy who was who's the same guy who fixed Kong's tooth. Oh, that dude. What's his name? Trapper. 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 I love. Yeah, him. Trapper. And, uh, played by Dan Stevens. He uh, he might be my favorite character. He's a very. Yeah, I was just saying really he is tell. like a cool character in this. He's a we have a it, character. I have to say. I, 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 how has it taken this long for us to finally have a kaiju veterinarian? Mm. Yeah, that's a good, good question. question. Yeah, if he does a good job at giving Kong a new suit, you know, pulling it out and everything. You'll be a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> I do love. I do love that he kind of became like the convenient exposition. <laughs> like, yeah. like, oh, Kong's hand is injured. Well, I have a solution for you. And <laughs> it just happens to, to have the look up here. and look what to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, I think on, on one of my favorite scenes with Trapper is when Bernie is freaking out after the tree mimic <laughs> tree <laughs> eats the wonderfully cantankerous pilot, and Bernie's like, "He's just gonna eat by a tree. He's gonna eat by a tree." And, and <laughs> oh like, my god! It's like Trapper's just like, "Yeah, man, I know. It's okay. We're gonna be fine." All right. Yeah. All right. Do you need and a hug? You're talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that podcaster who was in the last film. Yeah, Bernie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bernie. Oh, Bernie. He, yeah, I gotta say, uh, I uh, love uh, his character. Yeah, uh, as Dan, uh, not Danny, Donnie. I, I have a Danny and a Donnie that is. It's easy to make. But, but you know, as Donnie said on my podcast, she's like the things Trapper has seen that he is unbothered. Very <laughs> I, I gotta say uh, that. That that guy who was in this film and the last film, the Bernie? podcaster, Bernie, Bernie. I mean, yeah. that he's the one who who got me doing the, this uh, really oh, okay. At, after I saw the uh, Godzilla versus Kong Aww. a year later, I mean, a year later, I mean, I was. Like, uh, I was wondering what should I do for my channel? I can't edit videos anymore because, you know, I was afraid I might get. Copyright claim and all that, and and then yeah, well, I had yeah, a well, dream. Yeah, getting a copyright strike is now annual tradition for YouTube kids, is the charity. Yeah, because I this is why I don't edit videos or make in fan trailers anymore. Because yeah, and that's and and that's why that one night I had a dream that what if I do a podcast. Yeah, to do a podcast series about talk about these classic Godzilla films and other kaiju stuff, and you know, speaking of that, uh, coming up uh, on at the end of April, April thirtieth is the second anniversary year of my podcast. Woo! Congratulations! Yep, that I did my very first podcast episode to talk. To talk about the original Godzilla film from 1954 that I did with my kaiju bro, Goji fan in 1998. Yeah, that was that wow. I did back in 2022. Wow. And I was thinking, what if I do an episode reboot about you know, the original Godzilla since this, this year is the 70th anniversary? Oh, because okay. my because my very first podcast episode that the timeline was only like, I think it was like thirty six minutes. You know what? I say, why not? Like, this is your show. Like, you have a vision for it. Like, it's, that's a great way to celebrate both anniversaries. Yeah, I mean, I mean that video. It, I that reason why that it's only thirty six minutes short because I did. To be honest, I didn't think about doing research because I didn't do any research and study. 
Well, you, it was your first podcast, but let's be honest. We all have know this podcasting is really challenging. It really is. Like, yeah, it's mean, very intimidating. It's very nerve wracking. And I think for your first episode, you did very well. Like, I think you should grant yourself some grace. Like, yep. so what if it was 36 minutes, right? It's yep. still an episode. And, and that was, that episode, that was way before I got the shirt and the hat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, when I had you on the film vault to talk about Ebera, I was, I was blown away by how well you did. You know, I, I, I was very, I was very impressed with what you did. In fact, I even told you, it's like, hey, Brendan, help me out here because the other people on the show are not fans i need help <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, i'm glad you had me i mean so what you guys think should i do like an, an episode reboot of to talk about the original 54 godzilla why to not? have what all of you here? to make it make it a few hours long oh jeez oh no he's <laughs> going on yeah, yeah. maybe maybe an <laughs> hour a and a half man. or or two hours i mean i say create okay this is just me i have to create a time limit because i think everyone should be conscious of their time right um but if you want to do an hour and a half i think that's a pretty good yeah, but if you feel like i mean i will say play it by ear if you feel like the conversation's flowing well go over that like it's entirely up to you yeah i mean yeah yeah and i and i'll and i'll do some re and I'll do some research this time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and yeah, just refreshing. be careful. Just be careful having Elijah on because he talked for seven hours about minus one. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. there's, there's a record out there that someone needs to break that, that Daniel and Elijah said. And I actually listened to that whole thing too. That will never be me make, breaking that record. I can't, yeah. I, can't. I can give you maybe like 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You should get that, that skyscraper they hand out, you know. Uh, like, <laughs> the, bread, the, the, the what, oh crap, what do they call the it? The uh, broken skyscraper? You came with the mangled skyscraper. Mangled, mangled skyscraper. skyscraper yeah. really, yeah, For mangled breaking skyscraper. the podcast record, you get the mangled <laughs> There you go. We don't need to inflate Elijah's ego more than it already is. <laughs> well, anyway, back you know, back to got you know, back to the new empire. And well, that's the case. Since can I just ask you there, Brendan, a question? This is Abra yeah. is your, that particular Godzilla movie is your favorite movie? And of course, you know one thing Godzilla did in that movie at the very end, he made that wonderful splash in the water. So, what do you think now in GXK or Godzilla from the Rock of Gibraltar did the big splash that give you any Godzilla versus Sea Monster vibes? You know, seeing that did for me. Uh, like, oh, you talk about uh, the the surface fights and he... no, <laughs> when he when he dove into the water. Yeah, this is at the, Egypt. The, 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 uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I thought when Godzilla is on is on his way to fight Kong again. Mm -hmm. I thought that was like cool. Yeah, but it, it, that reminds you of like Godzilla versus the Sea Monsters. Remember at the very end, he he le leapt off the island in the water. He leapt off that bluff before the whole thing blew up. Yeah, you I know, know. Like I was like, where was the tsunami? Like, what would have caused a tsunami? <laughs> they didn't have the button to paint it in. So uh, yeah, it was actually, something that didn't dawn on me until after I saw the movie is Gibraltar's really far away from Giza. <laughs> Someone brought this up. I saw I saw someone on a, a, a podcast uh, earlier, and they mentioned it's like okay, the Rock of the Boat is like what three hundred some miles away. It's like yeah. I was, it, unless he just yeah. a really fast. Uh, well, Godzilla, Godzilla right. can burn a hole through the Earth's crust. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, but I all I kept thinking is all I kept thinking once I knew that, and then I saw the movie again. I'm like, my gosh, Godzilla hates that monkey. <laughs> <laughs> but be, I gotta say, he's like, it, he's here, isn't he? <laughs> It'll be like I, one of us realizing that our arch nemesis is three counties away, and then driving all the way over there just to punch them in the face. <laughs> 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 Oh, 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 I, and I got to say, before I, we talk about more of the Egypt fight, I want to say this is, like, the first time we ever see Godzilla, like, sucking the radiation through his mouth. He's, like, oh, yes. open his – because, you know, this this is not like the, the return of Godzilla or Godzilla yeah, 1985. I mean, he's, mm -hmm. he's, like – yeah, he's just absorbing through his mouth. He's, like, he – it's like he's puffing it all in. Like he was just like num 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 num. 
<laughs> Delicious. Yeah. yeah. He's uh, he's sitting there vaping. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Vaping. Uh, <laughs> like a milkshake. Not good for you, but yeah. <laughs> Did you say a milkshake? Yes. Who's having a milkshake? Radiation milkshake. Now I suddenly, now I suddenly, now I'm suddenly picturing him while you know, walking up to the plant and being like, "I did a milkshake, sir. This is a Wendy's." <laughs> Walter, did you just? And then he like milkshake? picks it up and turns it upside down to see if anything falls out. <laughs> Who sang milkshake a second ago? Because that made my day. Like that. <laughs> that, that, that was, was me. Yeah. That was. Oh like, no! It was, okay. it was iconic. It was and, iconic. And let and let me say, uh, I want to talk about the Egypt fight. I mean, we all know that. Yeah, Kong can't fight Scar King and Shimu on his own. He needs to get Godzilla over the help, kind of like Jet Jaguar did in Godzilla versus Megalon. I was just gonna mention that. I was just gonna mention that. I got major Godzilla versus Megalon vibes during that part. Like, oh my God, he's gonna go. <laughs> Godzilla was more cooperative than that. Gonna help save the day. Yeah, but you kind of, Godzilla kind of refused. He just wants to fight Kong, and he, and Kong was like. No, 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 wait. No, 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 dude, dude, dude. Oh, dude, dude, dude. It's a prank, it's a prank bro. And then Kong was like, no, no, wait, I need your help. I, I know we had our differences. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hilariously. Was like, dude, yeah. pipe down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Bob, yeah. Well, hilariously, if you go on an image flip, which is a, me or a place where you can make memes and you type in GXK, Kong going, it's already a template. It, it's such a <laughs> meme. <laughs> and then, and Godzilla is like, her. oh, go and, ahead, go ahead. Brandon. And Godzilla is like, wait, you need my help, my uh, help. Uh, and Kong's like, hey, I I saved your life, and and now it's your uh, turn uh, to save mine. Uh, <laughs> Mothra was like, boys, boys, settle down. And late time is over. The like, no more playing in the sandbox. It's time <laughs> to go into the other world. Imagine if Godzilla's face. Imagine if Godzilla saw Mothra for the first time in this age. Godzilla, they're like. No, no, not you. You're more worse than Kong. Because you <laughs> kicked oh, my butt is. so many times. He worships her, as, as, <laughs> as he should, <laughs> honestly. But can we talk about her finally weaponizing her god rays? Like, <laughs> I knew it. I knew it was going to happen. Uh, it was uh, iconic. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of iconic moments in this picture too. That's why I say it's it's funny how you go from one spot to another, and it's just like, wow, this is me. And like I say, when Godzilla jumps off the Rock of Gibraltar, I was like, what? You know, it's like it's it's these moments that really clarify say that this is what makes you want to go to the movie. What's yeah, the problem yeah. with people not enjoying well, this? You well, and, and let's also not forget Godzilla is apparently auditioning to be in WWE because he totally suplexed Kong. Dude, yeah. I, <laughs> oh, I don't know. Look, and, and then and then and then Kong does the pocket sand at him. You know, I was like, oh my pocket sand. I was also I, I, I was also thinking of evil Peter Parker from Spider-Man 3. Here's dirt in your eye. And if I'm a dirt in your eye. Uh, <laughs> I gotta but say, I mean, let me tell you guys this. I mean, uh, there, there, I know in the film, uh, there's some scenes that remind me some movie references. Like, there's one scene when Scar King's lair with a bunch of giant apes. I mean, it almost reminds me of Temple of Doom from Indiana Jones. <laughs> Yeah, I got that impression too. I mean, when all the giant A's are bound down. I mean, Scar King kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Molaram uh, from Temple of Doom. And then when. You didn't rip anybody's heart out. I'm going to say, you didn't do that. I don't know. The, 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 the Scar King's layer kind of reminds me of Temple of Doom a little bit. I mean, and. and the one thing I want to talk about is the little Kong him, himself, Zuko. 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 Oh, he's, Zuko. He's Who almost is one durable little punk. He is so <laughs> durable. <Yeah. laughs> hashtag, I'll say it again. Hashtag weaponized Suko. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Suko was actually based off like 
the uh, son of Kong from Nico. 19- yeah, he, he kind of does it almost a references to him, and he's not albino though. Yeah. yeah. Oh wait, I, but, but, <laughs> not sorry. Yeah, sorry. I was. I never sneezed on my podcast before. Oh no! Happy first time sneezing here. Yeah, yeah there you go. But I, I here's I, the thing. I was. Well, actually, I hope Biolanti doesn't show up with her you know, pollen power. Yeah. For... Anyway, I was actually a little surprised that Suka was such a little jerk, because the trailers made him look like this this lost little kid. He's like, oh he no, so help me, Kong! I'm so cute. You need to help me. And like, hey, 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 you know. And then <laughs> and we get and then we get that scene, and Kong's like, come here, little guy come here little guy come here ah! <laughs> Turn. And he bites. And, uh, i was that? like and i'm like i officially don't like you anymore <laughs> yeah, I felt the same way. That, that part reminds me of that scene from land of the Lost that will ferrell is trying to take a look at chaka's injured leg i mean chaka kind of hits at him and, and then rick marshall is like i'll tell you i'll tell you yeah. I don't know. I feel uh, like Kong was kind of unbothered. He was just like, dude, like, here's food. And like, yeah, it's like, like, dude, dude, like, actually, no, that was later because the little, the little jerk to uh, let him over to a lake to get eaten by the drowned viper, which is, so, <laughs> which is such a metal band name. And, <laughs> and Kong's like, you le- it was like you left me here to get eaten, didn't you? And then he has to fight the thing, and then he throws the axe, and then th- and then comes in. It's like nice try, kid. Yes, <laughs> here, eat it. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting uh, that both of our star monsters had to fight a sea serpent. Yeah, uh, and, yeah. I didn't know that 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 Shiko and I, and Kong when they're traveling together to go to Scar King's lair. I mean. That that poor remind me of from Donkey Kong Country, you know, and Donkey Kong's uh, sidekick Diddy Kong. It kind of reminds me of that. Okay. Like, Someone, that, oh, great! Someone's gonna make that fan edit, aren't they? <laughs> they actually did. They're gonna Photoshop the red tie and a little baseball cap on Suko. <laughs> yeah, they actually yeah. did a, a fan art of it online. Oh, really? I saw. Oh, wow. I think it's called the Divine Art. Is it? They, someone did, it made Kong into Donkey Kong with the red tie and gave Suko a little red hat. <laughs> that's, uh, that's hilarious. Or the opposite way of uh, uh, they made a, a Donkey Kong Diddy style animated of Kong and Suko. Right. I gotta do that. <laughs> Anything's possible. I yeah. In this <laughs> grand world we live in. Did they make news out of certain things through scenes so quickly? I'm like, wow, you really got that already? I mean, that one one meme I saw where guys were pounding Kong's face into the, the sand and Moth is just standing like, oh, <gasps> I love that art. I was just like, yes, that's exactly what the scene was. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then underneath it, it's it says hashtag boy mom. <laughs> <laughs> Quite literally. <laughs> uh, oh wow, it's been an hour and thirty two minutes. And- you Dude, you got six people in this stream. What were you expecting? <laughs> uh, You're gonna get the, get the yarn basically, <laughs> which I love. Yeah, so I want to talk about the human characters. They okay. brought back the death girl named Gia. 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 I got to say, I love her character. I mean, Haley she Hoddle is the breakout star of the monster verse, as far as I care, in terms of the actors who've been on it, because everybody fell in love with her in the previous, in GVK. And honestly, I, she was one of those she was just one of those characters one of those actors where i'm just like okay even if you hate this movie you will not besmirch the good name of gia i will fight yeah. you over gia <laughs> and gia i mean uh, the the main actress uh, of the who plays her she is actually death in real life and yeah 
That's what, and, which is what makes it great. And I saw, yeah. I saw some video of her actually at the premiere. My goodness, she has grown up quickly. She yeah, is a, she is a young woman now. Like you, she looks nothing like she does in either of these movies. Because yeah, I mean, because I mean, clearly they filmed these a few years ago, and she's like seventeen, eighteen now. And my goodness, she. Grew yeah, up. she. Yeah, I mean, she in the Godzilla versus Kong film, she kind of looks almost like between a kid and a teenager, but in in this new film, he's almost like he's almost between her teenage and adulthood yeah she's yeah she's a teenager she's a high schooler in this one mm-hmm. and, and yeah and what like my, yeah, and she like, did have a my, breakdown my, uh, in her classroom yeah yeah in a in a scene that looked eerily similar to the children to the psychic children drawing apocalyptic drawings yeah <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, one thing I appreciate about Gia, though, is that okay, you know, like both the Gamera series and the Godzilla series back in the nineties had a girl who had psychic connections with monsters. Of course, it was always on that psychic supernatural level. With Gia, it was much more grounded because she used sign language, and apes have been taught sign language. So it was all there's a mm-hmm. real world precedent for everything that was going on. Yeah, I'm trying to remember who, what was the name of the woman who did that. With a, it was Coco the gorilla, but I'm trying to remember. There was, I think, someone who taught Coco the gorilla how to do that. I can't Jane remember. Goodall. All, all the, Jane Goodall. That's right. Thank you, Donnie. Doctor Jane Goodall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I and I know that the, the 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 actress who plays the mother who raised Gia, and I mean, she wasn't the same actress who was in the last film. It was a different actress. I mean, no, no, it's the same it's one. Same, actress. same woman, different haircut. Yeah, yeah, she got a different. Oh wait, it's, it's the same. Pretty, yeah, don't feel don't feel bad. I didn't real I didn't realize when I watched the trailers that it was the same actress. I'm kind of embarrassed. Rebecca Hall. No, I love her new hairstyle. Rebecca Hall, like, that's right. So, yeah. Like, it's very like her new hairstyle is very like. Oh, what am I thinking of? Tomb Raider. I'm just like okay. Tomb Raider. Anybody familiar with Tomb Raider? Oh, really? uh, didn't Tomb Raider have like a shorter haircut at one no, point? No, she I've... had the she had the braid. Uh, the braid, yeah, she had a braid. Yeah. Lara, Cro- <laughs> Lara Croft had a braid. She's, yeah, that I that braid is iconic. Oh, I don't know who I'm thinking of then. It's uh, it's almost 11 p.m. So, uh, oh, <laughs> I can't remember my own name at this point. Oh, and, you. I, and I was and I was very disappointed that they didn't bring back Maddie. It, oh, Madison? It. Madison. I, I've read that they thought about it, but they couldn't figure out something for her to do in the movie. I heard that it was because Millie Bobby Brown, I mean, her her net worth is far more significant than it was, and it would have cost a lot, probably, too. Yeah, she's a big star now, you know. She, yeah, I, I also feel like the last film, like, yeah, I didn't really know what to do with her character, so like it kind of, I don't know. I, I, I moved the plot along. And that was yeah really her role. Yeah, exactly. I mean, she does an amazing job in the two previous films, King of the Monsters yeah. and Versus Kong. I mean, yeah, I mean, her her role in both of those movies is Godzilla fangirl. Basically, yeah, and and also Stranger <laughs> Thing uh, girl, and yes. And I gotta say, I mean, I mean, in King of the Monsters, she was in. Yeah, it's it's just it shows her like she was a teenager in this. I mean, but for yeah, Godzilla versus Kong, she is more like between a a a teenager and an adult. She's supposed to be an adult by that point because it's been five years since King of the Monsters. Yeah. Yeah. So she's out of high school at that point. Okay. Yeah, I just wish they could have brought her back, but like you said, it, they just don't know what to do with her. Yeah, at least at the moment. I mean, there's this movie's getting a sequel. It's practically guaranteed a sequel at this point because it was okay. made. This is the least expensive MonsterVerse film, which yeah. is just crazy for me to think about. And it, what's funny is I I found an interview with Wingard, and they asked him, "How did you manage to make this for less money?" And he said, we cut out all the waste. <laughs> so he said, we, it's like with the, one of the first things I learned making big budget movies is there's a lot of waste and we cut the waste. It's like, huh, 
something tells me somebody learned a thing or two from Gareth Edwards and Takashi Yamazaki. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Takashi Yamazaki made minus one for less than $15 million. Right. Mm -hmm. This one yeah. was 135 million, mm -hmm. which, like I said, is less than any other MonsterVerse film. And I gotta say, for the director of this film, who is the same director from the last film, right? He Winter. does, and he does an amazing job uh, making both of these films. I think I gotta say he's like the best uh, MonsterVerse director. I wouldn't go that far. I mean, well, I, uh, that's I'm just saying. I mean. I, know, I, like, wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far. I've, um, I'm a little, mm, I think I'm a little more partial to Gareth Edwards personally, but I don't know if I agree with that either. But that's just, I mean, I, I like Dogerty, <laughs> I like Dogerty too. And Jordan Ford Rob Roberts, Jordan Ford Roberts was probably the most stylish out of all of them. And he's my favorite, the Monsterverse. Yeah. They're pretty equalized to me. Like they both yeah. all have their strengths and weaknesses. So. Mm -hmm. Although Wingard has actually said that when he got to do GVK, he f he felt weird because he's like, I'm the new guy. I love all the guys who did the movies before me, and now I have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, he felt intimidated. Yeah. And, well, I, well, guys, I think that it's just about that time. I mean, is before I end the stream, I mean. Is there any more thoughts that you have about this film? Yeah, one thing I was wondering what you guys thought, you know, since I'm sure you, you guys have seen all the Monster Warverse films. And so if you go back to 2014 to Godzilla's nature there versus his, his nature now in this one, what do you think? Because one thing that really stood out to me is in 2014, Godzilla did not deliberately engage in any collateral damage. Like when he met, remember when he approached those boats, you know, those destroyers, and he stopped before running into them and went underneath them. And whereas now, like in the, in the current film, he, he doesn't, there's, there's no restraint. There's a bridge in a way, a bunch of cars on, who cares, plow right through it. Uh, what, what do you think about that changes his nature? He is a big fella. How is he supposed to avoid everything? Well, well, you you, you missed the point. In, in the first film, 2014, he made the effort. Remember, to, to well, with, a, with a ship, yes, but uh, but you know, getting from point A to point B when there's a bridge in the way, a little hard to do. And he did smash through the Golden Gate Bridge. In case you forgot. Well, that's that's you know true, but the thing is, you know, um, he did do like look, look how other than how he went about it, as far as not wrecking the Golden Gate Bridge versus wrecking those other bridges over there, in, 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 I think it was with. Italy, mm -hmm. wherever it was, or as Godzilla did not just go ahead and just smash it right away, you know, the Golden Gate. There was some reluctance there before he did. It was kind of point. It's like, well, I don't know how to get around this thing. I'm getting shot at, so mm -hmm. I'm going to go through it. There is a very, very subtle, there's a nuanced difference in the way it's handled. It's very similar to the directors because, you know, like Gareth Edwards, it seems a little bit more mild mannered and thoughtful, whereas Mensgaard is a very party type of guy. And, you know, <laughs> The way the monster, the Godzilla kind of reflects that from the two different directors. Mm -hmm. What do the rest of you guys think? It, I guess it depends on your point of view. I mean, because I personally feel like, you know, Godzilla feels like, you know, if I'm going to try to stop a certain uh, Titan, well, some collateral grammar has to happen. I mean, it's brought up in the one of the Marvel films, like, you know, Captain America said, you know, we may not be able to save everybody, but, you know, we have to get the job done. We have to do something, you know, so it could be a long, long line of that. So I don't know, but it, it, it just seems like he could have, like with the bridge sequence, you know, not run through all these bridges with cars or it was, uh, potentially has people inside, you know, kind of, <laughs> you know, but hey, it depends on his point of view on that. <laughs> I, I think that the beginning of Godzilla King of the Monsters really establishes the amount of actual damage that happened as a result of the battles in San Francisco. Um, I, my argument would be regarding like differences between 2014 and the rest of the monster verses. I feel like 2014 really focused in on creating like the gravity and scale of the Kaiju. Whereas like the other films, especially after King of the Monsters, like just focus I guess there's like fewer references with regard to scale, especially in this newer film. I have yeah. a counter argument for that, though. Yes. 
Yeah, which is the uh, Wingard has said that a lot of times what you're seeing in here is the monster's perspective, and I think that loss of scale is like bringing the audience up to their level, which is not unique to this movie. You watch enough Tokusatsu, there are points where that happens, where they kind of scale up when they shift POV to the mm -hmm. monsters. Oh, I actually agree with you. My point was that like the first couple of films really like mm -hmm. perspective wise, like you, you didn't always get to see them in their full glory. Like you would always, mm -hmm. it would always like pan away or be, hidden behind a damn waterfall excuse me <laughs> but you know what i mean right um yeah. just obscured by weather effects and every kind like don't get me wrong a many much of it was like really cool looking but now retrospectively it's like can we see the card you a little bit more and now we've been <laughs> now we've gotten that we've gotten that mm -hmm. yeah i i understand what you're talking about there but i think it, it was you know, like you said it was it was meant to create the scale because it's the human perspective and yeah. we need a frame of reference to know how big these things are and putting Mothra behind. I, you know what? I, I just think Mothra wants a little privacy. Okay. She's metamorphosing. <laughs> Give her her space. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't need you to watch me while I'm doing my thing. <laughs> Kim, what'd you say? <laughs> and she's busy being fabulous. Don't you can't rush fabulousness. You no, gotta, you, know. you can't. This is true. She, the, the, Mothra is in her dressing room. Okay. <laughs> well, kind of, but Doctor uh, Donnie's point though is like, okay, even when we get we after after she hatches and then she appears at the submarine, uh, you know, as soon as she's covered by this radiant light, and then you just kind of hear, her, but you don't see her. Oh, that seems beautiful though. But like, yeah, I was just like. Could we see a silhouette? Whereas in GXK, like they did like more silhouetting when Mothra was like using her god rays. You so you could actually like see her form, which was a nice touch. Yeah, it, it was a nice touch. And yeah, I mean, and yeah, so this movie is like it's like a is it's a really you know, great movie. It's like is it almost uh, the same radius as the as the or, or the last film? Yeah, but I'm afraid this one is going to be going to have higher rateds. Uh, it's doing it's doing really well with audiences. If you care about Rotten Tomatoes, the, it's doing worse with critics compared to GVK. But I still better than <laughs> no, nothing. Monsters, I don't know why some yeah. people think GVK. Yeah, I don't know why some people think that Godzilla King of the Monsters thing is is not a good monster versus because film. because critics are fickle <laughs> because and of all the, the storms and I think jet. critics are very exhausted of action films. That's my like like heroic style action films, which I think is asinine. That's just me. Yeah, but um. Critics are always going to have their, you know, perspectives and thoughts. Yeah, Whereas, like, they have a long tradition of being critical of monster films, horror films, sci-fi films. It, it's they like a, they do, like they do. It's, they do. They they it. it's yeah. rare that they ever give thumbs up to an action picture. Yeah, well, and it should be noted. It should be noted that critics can say one thing when a movie comes out, and they completely change their tune later. I mean, when. When Citizen Kane came out, critics hated it because they thought it was weird. And then, and then later on, sometime, sometime later, they decided, "Oh no, wait! It's actually the greatest movie mm -hmm. ever." We just realized that. Yeah. Where were you before? <laughs> they said that they said that same thing about the original Star Wars. You know, they said that you know, yeah, this is like uh, this is not really art. This is not, it's like years later. It's like this is the most classically, you know, beautifully made film of like. Dude, it was always that. You just didn't see it, you know? Yeah. So I don't, I honestly don't put a lot of faith in critics. That's why I don't care about any of these review aggregate sites because people only cite them when it backs up their, supposedly backs up their argument. That's yeah. why I just, I don't care anymore. I, the last time I stopped bringing it up on my podcast. And the only reason I even brought it up for minus one is just because. It, it, it was unprecedented that it we got a, pl a 90 plus percent rating for both critics and audiences. And I was like, and I even prefaced it by saying like, for what it's worth, 90 plus percent, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't put much stock in it. Yeah. So what well, do you guys think about the, oh, I'm sorry. Would you want to just kind of close it up or? 
I was going to say, I think it's about that time to okay. close it up. I mean, I do love the film. I get the, and good thing I saw this film for the first time with my girlfriend on our date night. And then I saw it again, uh, almost like two weeks and, later, I saw it with okay. my friend. And, and you yeah. know she's a keeper because she didn't dump him right afterward. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Because you dragged her to see a Godzilla film and and she and she didn't get mad at you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, hopefully I'll get to have her on my uh, on my podcast. And, but good thing she was in my shorts that I did mm. when I was going seeing the film. Oh, so you're going to have your wife on. Got it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, dude, if you, if the, dude if you guys are together long enough to, you're just gonna get a common law marriage anyway so <laughs> just get it over with <laughs> as i was saying like uh so i i just hope they're gonna make another monster verse oh they are years. they are i just hope I mean, they're I, I just hope they're going to make this film into a Godzilla story this time. That's what director Wingard has already said he's going to do. It's going to be more focused on Godzilla's past on this one, on the next one, and we'll get more of him and really focus on Yeah, because yeah. So, cause, cause we've been getting some more uh, movies that are about Kong. Yeah, I think he said that he would like to do something with Godzilla like he did with Kong here, and I'm like, Godzuki confirmed. What? <laughs> I'll start that. I'll start that rumor. I just right hope now. they bring back Manila. Yeah, I think he said something along the lines of trying to reach the same emotional highs as Godzilla versus Destroyer. And if you've seen my video on that film, you know, that's gonna. <laughs> Here's the thing: they've technically, they technically, potentially set up Destroy a couple movies ago. So they did. They, they did. It. Oh. And you, you, I'm like, you better do something with that because. That's actually one of my gripes with King of the Monsters. I'm like, really? You're just going to slap a name on this thing? You could have called it Super Nuke, and it would have accomplished the exact same plot point. Exactly. You didn't need to call that. If you want to use that to make destroy, on the other hand, I will retroactively forgive you. There you go. <laughs> well, friends, I've, I'm being summoned, so I actually have to get going for the night. Uh, but I had a lot of fun. Thank you for bearing with my inane well, babble. Well, well, Donnie, you're just about that perfect time as gotta oh. say, uh, and I got to say, Donnie, Kim and Walter and you. Yeah, I know that Neil and Nathan have been on my previous podcast so many times, but I want to say to you three on the bottom of the screen is I want to thank you all so much for coming back on my on my show because I haven't had you guys in in a long while. Thank you. It's, it's been, been a long minute. time since I had you. Yeah, it's been a hot minute, yes. Yeah, because, you know, I got to have you guys back. Uh, you know, yes, no, please it. please keep you. dragging Kim out of semi-retirement. <laughs> <laughs> that is my goal this year. I will drag her out of uh, out of semi-retirement. Like, Kim, Kim, that Megalon episode is coming. Come on. I'm going to jingle the keys in front of her. It's like, come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Jaguar. <laughs> Jaguar. Megalon. <laughs> Well, the creative breaks uh, are so important. <laughs> yeah. Know. Well, I say that because I'm very burnt out myself. <laughs> well, for the audience in the comments, thank you all for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more kaiju podcast episodes coming soon. And like I say in Japanese, Saranawa. Saranawa. Bye. Bye.